Hey, it's Tony from Adafruit, and in this video, I want to look at how to use one of these things. This is a micro SD card with micro Python. So an SD card is like a secure digital storage card, what you might use with a digital camera or lots of little devices. So you can get these nowadays, for like eight gigabytes or so for just a few dollars. Uh, and they go to huge amounts of storage. And so we'll see how you can use these with some MicroPython boards. Some of them just out of the box, you can plug in an SD card and store either data or code on that card. And then others like the ESP8266 we'll look at. Recently, there have been some changes where you could actually use an SD card if you wire up a little SD card holder and uh, run a little bit of code to use that card. So we'll just kind of dive in and start playing with SD cards and MicroPython. And this video eventually is gonna go with a guide that'll probably be published later this week uh, to look at you know more details of how you can set up the SD cards. So let's just kind of jump in and we'll see what's happening here. Let's see, we'll go to the main view. So turn on this. Uh, so, okay, so we're just gonna start real quick with the Pi board. And by the way, I'll put links in the description when this goes up on YouTube. If you're not familiar with MicroPython, start with the What is MicroPython guide. That has links to a bunch of other guides uh, to take a look at. So the Pi board is uh, one of the popular boards for MicroPython, the first board that supported it. And the cool thing is it has this little thing right here where my finger is kind of pointing, uh, I guess here, right here. So this is a little micro SD card holder. It's kind of a unique one. I haven't really seen this style. So it just holds the very edge of the card and you can slide a card in there just like that. And the cool thing is this board was built from the start to support putting a card inside of here. Because remember, pretty much every MicroPython board has an internal file system. Most of them use the flash memory on the microprocessor. Uh, but because it has that file system, it can be extend, uh, extended a little bit so that it can work with uh, an external card like this. It's really easy because that card can have a similar uh, FAT file system on it. You can load files from there, you can save files, do all kinds of stuff like do like data logging to this. So I'll show you with the Pi board, it's really easy. I'm just gonna plug this thing in. So I plugged in an SD card, um, then I'm gonna connect it to my computer. So let me make sure I get that correct, there we go. And you don't have to have a card plugged in to use the Pi board. Like it, it will use the internal memory if it doesn't detect uh, the uh, SD card being connected. And then let's just jump real quick into the REPL. So I'm just gonna connect the uh, the serial REPL on this board. I think it shows up as, yeah, USB modem, 11.5200 baud. So, okay, so at this point I'm connected to the board. And the cool thing is uh, if you just want to list all the files, you can use the standard Python commands. So os.listdir, this will list all the files in a directory. So you can see this has uh, a bunch of these temporary files. Uh, like, you know, this is, I'm using a Macintosh, which unfortunately creates all this junk kind of hidden stuff uh, inside of there, but it's fine, they're just files. But I have some stuff in here like this test.py file. Uh, and I can actually open that file if I want and just print it out. So if I want to open the test.py and then open that for reading, and then if I just want to read the whole file, you can see here, and it, it doesn't do pretty printing, uh, but it's basically, it, it defines a couple Python functions in here. And so if I close that file, then I can actually import this because remember, if you go back to the video I did, the MicroPython basics on how to load modules and run code, uh, that one looked at, you can import a module, which just will look for a module that's built into the MicroPython firmware. And if it doesn't find that, it'll look in the file system. And in this case, because I've plugged in the SD card or the micro SD card right here, uh, it's gonna look at that SD card to see what .py files are on there and use those to import the code. So if I run import test, this actually just imported the test.py file. 
that we saw here. And so if I want, uh, I can call the functions in there. So I put an add function that just adds the two arguments, you know, the easiest function in the world. But good, quick little demo of how easy it is to use an SD card with uh, the Pi board. Like you just plug it in and it's configured out of the box to use that SD card and just make it the root file system on the board. Um, I believe you can also run from flash memory and then access, there's a slash SD path that it creates. But in general, take a look at the documentation for the Pi board. There's a link in the What is MicroPython guide to all the board documentation. And that'll tell you a little bit more details about how it implements the SD card, because it's a little bit, uh, little bit specific to each port right now, how they work for this. So, okay, cool. So I'll close this. And maybe just to show you also, I'll just grab this card and connect it to uh, my Macintosh machine here. And uh oh, I need to unplug something to fit the. Fit the I'm going to unplug. Um, okay, so let me plug in this SD card because I'll just show you. Because this is the nice thing when you have an SD card, you know, you can pull it out of your board, put it in your computer, and copy files over. It's like really easy. You don't have to use necessarily like a tool like Ampy or something like that. Um, you know, if, if you want, it's just files. Like this should work on anything, even like an Android phone. You could probably pop this out and uh, and use it on your on your device. Okay, so let me look at, so here's the, the card right here is this te, uh, data drive. And you can see I just have a test.py file on here. And if I open this up, I don't want to open that with Xcode. That's it's a little heavyweight for this. Uh, we'll open it with the Atom text editor. And so if I open this up, then now you'll see the code. So, you know, here, add, subtract, pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, and so you can add more code inside of here. And you don't have to put code on this. Like you could have data files, you could have images, you could have text files. You can open those files like I just showed using the standard Python open, close, read, write functions and store stuff. So like if you're logging sensor readings, really great idea. You could use an SD card and just open the file, write out a line of each sensor reading and you're pretty much set. You're ready to go for that. So, okay, let me eject this real quick because we'll use this now uh, with another thing. So I'll also mention uh, another board that supports the SD card kind of out of the box is the YPI. So the YPI is this little board right here. And the YPI alone doesn't support SD card. So you can see there's no SD card holder on here. It's just basically a module, but it has this little expansion board right here, this thing. Uh, and this basically, this, this is the link, and I'll put these links in the description when this goes up on YouTube. You can use this little expansion board and it has a little micro SD card holder there. And then your YPI just kind of slots on the top of it uh, like this. And uh, check out the documentation. So I, I won't go through and do a demo of this, uh, but it's pretty similar to the Pi board. It doesn't automatically load this as the root file system as far as I can tell. But if you look at the documentation, they show you how you can create an SD card object just with no parameters using the defaults that will use the expansion board. And then you have to explicitly tell it that you want to mount that SD card under like a slash SD root. So it looks like with the YPI, you can share both the internal flash memory and your SD card and like give it a different path uh, to use. So cool, kind of nice option to have for that. So, okay, so there's one other board though. The, the one that uh, is, is pretty popular is of course the ESP8266. And this is the Feather Huzzah version of it. So I've been using this a lot for uh, the videos of MicroPython. So with this one, you don't have an SD card out of the box, unfortunately, or my SD card connector. Uh, you know, maybe you're using some fancy board that has one built in, but the ESP module doesn't really have uh, support baked in for it. But there is something you can do. So in, if you look at in a recent version of MicroPython, so uh, if, you, if you aren't familiar, I'll put a link in the description on YouTube. This is the MicroPython GitHub repository, which is kind of the main home for all the source code. If you go to the releases tab, you can actually see each of the releases and the release notes. And so uh, a few weeks ago, there was a 1.8.4 release. And one kind of cool thing to note here is uh, the, for the ESP8266 port, the os.umount function is implemented and the port supports implement, uh, mounting of an externally connected SD card. So that's kind of cool. There's some basic support in the port now for the ESP8266 so that you can use an SD card that you connect to it. And SD cards use SPI, the serial peripheral interface. Go back to the um, 
MicroPython hardware spy devices guide that I did. I'll put a link in the description below and this goes on YouTube uh, and you can check that out. I talk a little bit more about the spy kind of protocol, but just with a few connections like a clock, an input output connection, uh, power and ground, you can connect to a micro SD card and start reading data from it and mounting it as a file system for MicroPython on the ESP8266. So let's give it a shot and I'll show you, I'll run through the process and it's it's not kind of plug and play. You, you have to do a little bit of coding, a little bit of stuff to make this work, uh, but it's not super hard. And I think it's actually a really useful thing because once you have an SD card, you can greatly expand your storage. So you can store you know, files, you can store Python source code. It's not completely free because, you know, remember, if you put source code on that SD card and you try to import it, it's got to fit into memory. And so, you know, you're limited still by the 96 kilobytes or so of memory uh, that the ESP8266 has. But it's nice to just have uh, that ability to have, you know, one of these uh, SD cards that you can pop in here and, and make it work. So, okay, let's take a look then. Uh, and so you might be wondering, okay, how do I connect a micro SD card to like the Feather Huzzah? Well, hey, look at this. We've got an, a fancy little wing that you can use. So this is the Ada Logger Feather Wing. This has a couple things on it. This has a real-time clock, a nice little real-time clock uh, that's built in here. You communicate with it over the I2C interface and it has a little battery backup here. Uh, and then it also has a micro SD card holder here. So this was really intended for like sensor data logging where you wanna know, okay, here's the time and maybe I'm like measuring humidity or like moisture level or something like that. Uh, and you can save all those readings to your SD card. So great with like Arduino, there are libraries for that. But we'll see, this is perfect for MicroPython because if you take one of these things, so I've got one right here that's just kind of pre-assembled, you just solder some headers onto here. And then you probably wanna make sure when you build your uh, Feather Huzzah that you put the little stacking headers on here so that you can stack the wing right on top of it. But this is all you need. It has the SD card connected to the spy pins that the ESP8266 uses. And then there's one extra pin. There's a chip select pin that you need to use with the SD card. And that's connected to GPIO 15 on the ESP8266. So that's perfect. We'll, we'll use that. And I'm just going to connect these together. So like you literally just pop these together, you know, just like a, a shield or a wing or uh, whatever you want to use. So we put that on. Uh, and then let's see, the next thing I want to do, I will put the SD card inside of it. Let me pull it out of the computer real quick. Okay, so I'm just going to pop the SD card into here, or micro SD card rather. So the SD cards are, they're the, um, the big ones, you know, like this. Uh, so these won't work usually. I mean, you might have a board that has an SD card. I think functionally they're very similar to micro SD, but most things use micro SD these days. Uh, okay, so we've got the micro SD card in there. And then I will plug in this board, but I'll show you what we need to do now to make this work. So it's not gonna work out of the box, unfortunately. Like um, the MicroPython ESP8266 port doesn't know how to read the SD card. It really doesn't know anything about this uh, device. So it doesn't even know that it's connected until I start running some code for this. Uh, but I'll show you, it's pretty straightforward to make this work. Now the place that I found out how to make this work, I'll show you, it's kind of in the source code. It's not documented super well, but like I said, uh, I'm gonna put a guide out this week that'll kind of walk you through the steps. So don't worry if you don't follow this all completely. Uh, keep an eye on our blog and we'll have a post with this guide probably Wednesday, I think, uh, Wednesday this week. We'll get a guide out for this. But anyways, I saw this in um, under the drivers directory of the source code. This is where there's uh, Python code, MicroPython code, or well, Python code rather, that's meant to talk to certain hardware. And it's not necessarily built into every port. So it's up to each port, like the ESP8266 port, to pick out which drivers it wants to include. And so out of the box, the ESP8266 port doesn't really include anything driver-wise. Like it's got NeoPixel and a few basic things, but the SD card is one thing actually that's in here that's not included with the, the ESP port. Uh, but you can see this is just .py, like this is all pure Python code. There's no like machine code in here. It's all uh, pretty straightforward stuff. It's just using the spy protocol to talk to the SD card. And there's certain operations that you have to, you know, use the spy protocol to talk to the card. Like you write, I think at like a block level, you know, certain sizes of, uh, of blocks of data. But they show up here, example usage on the ESP8266. And this was kind of the little trick that once you found this, this is what you need to do to make this work. Um, and so we're basically gonna follow this, but I'll show you there's actually a few tweaks here, like this machine.spy uh, with this 1.84 release, this kind of changed. You need to use a value of one instead of zero for this, but I'll walk through and we'll, we'll see how this works. 
Uh, but you can see it's pretty straightforward. We're, we're going to create an SD card object. So this is how we tell the um, board or tell MicroPython that, hey, I've got a micro SD card connected, and this is the spy interface it's connected to, and this is the chip select pin that we should use. So pin 15 is what we want to use. Uh, then this os.umount function, what this does is this tells MicroPython uh, you you know by default it boots up and it uses 20 kilobytes of flash memory as its internal file system. Umount says forget that, just ignore like unmount the file system. I don't have a root file system anymore. And then this VFS fat command right here, this creates a VFS fat object. And if you dig into the source code, you can see what this is. But this is basically what implements the fat file system, which is what's on the board here. Uh, and basically, this is kind of the magic trick where we say, okay, create a new FAT file system, use the SD card that I created up above here as kind of the backing store for this, or the block level store. Uh, and so for the internal flash memory, it actually does this same line, but instead of using an SD card, it's using an object that interacts with the flash memory on the ESP8266, but similar kind of thing here. So we're saying, okay, create a root file system, um, using that SD card, and then this is kind of the path to create that file system under. I think right now you have to just pass an empty string to tell it to make the root file system. Uh, and then this os.lister is just going to list all the files. So this just tells you that you've mounted your root file system. So really it's just these three commands, or four really, if you import the module, uh, to, to mount this uh, card. So okay, so that's what we need to do. Now the tricky thing is, I'm going to connect, I connected up my ESP board here, and uh, let's see, I can't remember if I'm running the official firmware or not, but uh, I'm pretty sure I'm running the official firmware. So hopefully this will be a good example that fails. Uh, let's see, let me connect to the Scilabs device. Uh, so again, I'm just connecting the REPL. And so let's try, if I import SD card, uh-oh, uh no module named SD card. So uh, what you need to do here, so and maybe first of all, before I get too far into this, um, I should also call out, like we were just looking at, uh, in the release notes, if you go into releases, you know, you need to be using this 1.8.4 release of MicroPython. So, so step one, load your ESP board with the 1.8.4 release of MicroPython. And if you aren't familiar with that, look at the What is MicroPython guide. I have a link to the MicroPython Basics, how to load MicroPython on a board guide. And that tells you where to find the official firmware. Um, you can get it either from the GitHub link here on the releases tab, or just go to micropython.org. And I actually just noticed um, it's a little bit simpler now. So you go to the download page, go to the ESP8266, and then it gives you two firmwares. There's the stable firmwares at the top, and then the uh, kind of daily development builds. You want the 1.8.4 stable release usually. The in-development ones just have maybe more cutting edge features. They haven't been uh, released yet. They also have things like the web REPL isn't enabled and debug info is turned on by default. So usually you want the stable one. So make sure to get the 1.8.4 release. Uh, load that onto your board. Like I said, uh, check out the What is MicroPython guide. It links to how to load uh, MicroPython on a board guide if you're not familiar with that. And then uh, the next thing we need to do, so the easy way to make this work, we can actually just copy the code for this uh, SD card. So in that drivers SD card, there we go. We can copy this SD card.py file onto the internal file system and just import it directly like that. Now it's not super memory efficient, but it does work. So I'll, I'll show you how that works. So I'm just gonna go back, I'll exit out of the REPL. Uh, and I'm going to set my ampy uh, port variable equal to that Scilabs device. Uh, I'm going to use the ampy tool. Check out the what is MicroPython, how to load files, and uh, how to load code and load modules and run code on your board. That's the guide where I talk about this ampy tool. It's just a tool to copy files onto the file system. Uh, and so if I run ampy ls, this is just going to tell me that there's only a boot.py file on this uh, board right now, on its internal file system. So let's download this MicroPython SD card.py. So I'm just going to grab this directly from their GitHub repository. I'll get the raw version here. And then if I just wget this file, it should download it and put it into this directory. Uh, oh, I guess I don't have wget on this machine. Uh, well, how about this? Uh, I'm just going to open up the Atom text editor. That's funny. Uh, you, you would think that wget's installed on everything, but I guess I found a machine that doesn't have it. It's my main, uh, my main development machine here. So, OK, there we go. We'll copy that. And then uh, let's save that, and let's save this in my repositories uh, directory here. And yeah, it's inside here where I'm at. So we'll say sdcard.py. 
Okay, so I saved that file, and now I close that, and I should have that in this directory, and yeah, there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna put that SD card.py onto my board here. So the put command with ampy again, go back to that tutorial. This is just gonna copy the file from my local machine onto the, onto the MicroPython board and its in internal file system uh, for this. So it'll take a second, it's a little bit large file. Okay, cool, so now let's connect to the REPL and let's go to the Scilabs device, 11.5200. And okay, so now we can actually do what that uh, example here kind of mentioned. So let's import these modules. So we import machine, import SD card. So here's the thing that hopefully should work. And yep, it just it loaded it. So I copied over that .py file um, and it loaded it. And now the OS module also. So that's just useful to run some functions in there. Okay, now I need to create an SD card object. So uh, I'll create this and it's from the SD card module. There's SD card class and then takes in two parameters. The first parameter is a spy interface uh, that it's gonna use to talk to the SD card. And for the ESP8266, there's really only one hardware spy interface, uh, but here's where it differs from the example. So you wanna create a machine.spy interface. In the example here, they show interface zero. That's what you needed to use with versions of MicroPython ESP8266 before 1.8.4. So 1.8.3 and earlier. They used the machine, uh, the hardware interface for SPY on interface zero. That changed in the 1.8.4 release. So you actually want to use one for this value here. And if you try to use zero, I'm pretty sure it's going to throw an error. It says that uh, it's, I think it's like it's internal, uh, the internal flash that's connected to the ESP board is what it, it uses interface zero for. So it actually might work, but uh, it's, I don't think it's gonna work the way you expect it. Uh, okay, and then you need to tell the chip select pin, and that's just the pin object for the uh, ADA logger wing, it's pin 15 that you wanna use for that. And you can change it, like if you cut a trace and uh, you can like resolder to a different one, but use pin 15, it, it works fine for this. So okay, so we've got an SD card object now, uh, but we still, so if I, if I uh, run that os.lister command, you know, notice it's only showing stuff that's on the internal file system. So, you know, I created this SD object, but I still haven't told it that I want to make that SD card the root file system for this. So here are the magic lines that do that. The os.umount function. So we'll call that unmount, os.umount. And the cool thing is after you do this, run that lister command again and uh-oh, like it fails, like eno dev. This just means that there's no file system on this board right now. So I can't use any of those OS operations. Now here's the magic thing that kind of creates the file system. The, you create this VFS fat object. Now the way they show it here is it looks like a function call, but this is actually creating an object. This VFS fat is a class, it's implemented in C, uh, and it's not actually assigning it to any variable, so it's just gonna be created. Uh, and I think they're just relying on some of the side effects of the initializer for this. Uh, I think a better way to do this is to just create an object called VFS, which matches what the boot.py does. I'm not gonna get into all the details. If you dig into the source code, you'll see there's a VFS object that is kind of the file system object. So it kind of makes sense, you know, this umount command destroyed this VFS object. Like if I, if I run this, uh, oh boy, <laughs> that was funny. I just re rebooted the board. So I guess uh, don't, don't uh, unmount the file system and then try to look at the VFS object because it was probably uh, just destroyed or something. Uh, so that, that was kind of funny uh, to try that. Okay, well, uh, that, that's what happens, I guess, if you, uh, if you crash the board in some ways. It's the first time I've seen MicroPython crash like that, so that's interesting. Uh, okay, let's start over again because I just uh, crashed the board. So import machine, import SD card, import OS. So, okay, we import all those. We create our SD card object again, SD card and machine.spy interface one, machine.pin15, uh, os.umount. Okay, so now, like I was saying, we wanna create this VFS fat object, uh, but I, I, like, I wanna assign it to a variable so that I know for sure the garbage collector isn't gonna come by later and uh, get rid of this object and who knows what side effects that might create. So I'm just gonna assign VFS equal to OS dot, uh, let's see, what was this called? VFS fat object, so VFS fat. And then here's where I need to tell it. Now I'm gonna use the SD card as kind of the backing store for this file system. And then uh, where to mount it in the file system of the MicroPython board. Empty string just means root. And so I think that's, I, I tried other paths and it didn't seem to work. So maybe that stuff's not implemented yet. Uh, but okay, so I'm gonna run this. And now let's try OS.lister. And hey, check this out. 
notice we have a test.py file here, which is just like the test.py that I had on the SD card there. So, and this is cool. I can import that test module if I want and run test.add. You know, there's a function on there that I implemented. And hey, cool, look at that, it works. So that's pretty cool. You know, I have an eight gigabyte card on here, so I could store a lot of data. Now I'm not saying like you can have eight gigabytes of source code on here, because like I mentioned, you know, when you run that import command, it's actually pulling it into memory of the ESP8266. So, you know, you're still limited by the memory of the processor, but it gives you a lot more flexibility. You know, you can put things on here, especially data files, like images, stuff like that. But again, you do have to be careful. Like if you have a large image and you try to load it all into memory, you've only got 96 kilobytes or so, and that's uh, before MicroPython takes, you know, its cut of some of the memory. And if you're curious too, to see the memory usage, uh, import the MicroPython module, and there's a micropython.mem underscore info function. You run that, this will tell you your, your heap usage. So you can see I have about 28K of heap available, 13K is used, 14K is free roughly. So, you know, I'm not gonna be loading like a megabyte size image into memory, but I could go like maybe, you know, a kilobyte chunk at a time through that file, get the important data that I need, you know, st store whatever program state uh, that I want, and then, uh, you know, I can deal with that. Or maybe I'm just writing files, like writing, you know, uh, sensor readings or logging stuff. You know, I can open a file, write lines of text, that's not gonna use much memory. And you know, I'll just keep dumping that into the file and you could store lots of data onto an SD card like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But like I mentioned, so memory usage is a little bit of a concern on some of these boards. And the problem is, you know, the way that I copied that SD card.py over to my board, you know, it's on the internal file system, it's importing it, and it's using the RAM on the board for that import. So if you look like right now, like let's kind of remember. So all I've done is I've imported machine, uh, the SD card and the OS module. I've created that SD card object. I've created the file system and I've already used 13K of um, my heap memory. So let's see if we can reduce this memory usage. I'm actually gonna close out of the REPL. And in a previous video, in the how to load modules and run code vi uh, video, which I'll put a link to that guide in the description below, check out that guide. I talk about you can freeze a module, which means that you put that module inside of the compiled MicroPython firmware. And you can actually do that with the SD card module. Now it's not done by default, so you're gonna have to build your own MicroPython ESP8266 firmware, but it's actually pretty easy. And I, I have a whole guide on this. So there's a how to build firmware guide. It sets up a little virtual machine using Vagrant. So you can do this on Windows, you can do this on Mac OS X. It's all the same instructions for that. Uh, and you really just have to run like three or four commands and, it, and you'll be ready to build custom firmware for this. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna get a tool chain set up, get this uh, Vagrant VM set up and so that you're ready to compile MicroPython firmware. And I'll show you, we can actually freeze this SD card module into a custom build of the MicroPython firmware so that it uses less memory and we can import it and load and mount that SD card without as much of an impact on uh, the RAM usage for this. So let's give it a shot. Uh, I'm inside of actually my Vagrant um, repository here, which if you follow this guide, it has you clone this repository. So it's actually already set up and running. So I'm just gonna vagrant SSH into the box. Uh, again, follow this guide. It goes through all the details of how to get this up and running. Uh, okay, so I'm in my box now. I'm gonna go into the MicroPython folder. This has the current MicroPython source code that was cloned from GitHub. So it has basically all of this code inside of here. Uh, and it goes all the way back to this root MicroPython repository directory. And then inside of there, I wanna go into the ESP8266 folder. And you know, again, make sure you follow the guide and that you can get a basic, you know, if you run make, it should be able to build the uh, firmware and you shouldn't see any errors here. You should get past this linking step and make sure that you see this uh, created the firmware combine.bin file here. Okay, so to freeze this SD card, all I need to do is copy from the drivers folder, the SD card folder, this SD card.py into the ESP8266 port, the modules folder, because anything in the modules folder will be frozen into the firmware when it's built. And I talked about this in the how to load modules and run code guide. So I'm just gonna go into the modules directory and I'm just gonna copy a couple levels up from the drivers directory, the SD card directory, SD card.py, we just copy it right into here. So now if I look in my modules directory, you can see 
you know, it has a bunch of things that they bake in already, like, um, you know, the DS18, uh, X20, these are little temperature sensors and things, um, uh, one wire temperature sensors. So, but here's the important thing, here's the SD card.py. So then I'm gonna go back up to the ESP8266 port directory. If I run make, it'll actually pick up that I added a new file. And so here's the important thing that I see is that it just froze that SD card.py and it built it into the firmware. So now this firmware combine.bin file includes the current MicroPython firmware for ESP8266 and that SD card.py built into it. So, okay, so let's copy that combined firmware. It's in the build directory. And, and again, this is all just straight from the, the guide that I wrote on how to uh, use this. I'm gonna copy it into the Vagrant folder so that now when I exit the virtual machine, it's, it, it's uh, synced to my computer here. And so here's that firmware combine.bin file. And now I can burn this to my, uh, my board here. And I, I wanna use the esptool.py. And again, this is all in the guide, uh, so you can follow that. And if I point it at the device, so it's the tty.scilabs device, and I wanna run the erase flash command first, because in general, when you're burning firmware for the ESP port, you usually wanna erase all of the flash memory so it starts fresh. Uh, because you know later versions of MicroPython might do new things with Flash and they might be using the old Flash memory and you could get into a weird undefined state. So erase the Flash memory whenever you burn uh, the, the chip. Okay, and then let's run esptool.py. Again, I'm gonna point it at my board, uh, the tty.scilabs device. And now I also wanna give the baud rate and I forget the exact command, so I'm gonna go back to my guide here. And to flash the firmware, I wanna run with baud468 460800, the right flash command, flash size, and then basically just all the rest of this command here. So I'll copy this in and we'll paste it here. And then I'll just show you the, the instructions. So, oops, I gotta go back and get an extra slash dash there. There we go. So this is gonna use, this is the baud rate for when it's flashing the firmware, uh, the right flash command. This is just telling you the size of the flash memory and then where to start. So position zero in flash memory. Uh, and then what file to write, the firmware combined that we copied out of the virtual machine. So firmware combined.bin has our custom build of MicroPython that includes that SD card.py inside of it. Okay, so I'm gonna run this and just take a second here. It's gonna flash it to the board. And then as soon as that's done, we'll reset the board and we'll connect to it. And we should hopefully be able to just load that SD card module uh, without having to copy it over as a .py file. And again, the whole reason I'm doing this is because it's gonna save memory. So uh, if we remember, after I imported the SD card.py and ran the commands to mount the file system, we had about 13 kilobytes of heap memory used. So let's try the same thing now with the frozen module and see how that helps. Okay, so I'm gonna just first press the reset button to make sure that I reset the board, because usually after you flash, I've noticed with the ESP, boards, you have to reset them so that you can connect to the REPL. And then let's connect to the REPL again. Uh, let's see, Scilabs, yep, 115200. Okay, so we've got Python REPL, and I'm just gonna try, I just wanna make sure, well, actually, well, yeah, let's 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 try it. Um, so maybe before I import the SD card, actually, let's import the OS module, os.lister, let's just see what's on this board. So, okay, so there's a the boot.py. So we see for sure there's no SD card.py, but if I import SD card, hey, that worked. Uh, I noticed it was actually pretty quick, like boom, it just loaded. Uh, you might have noticed before when I ran that import command, it was a little bit slow. That's because it had to load that text file with Python source code, convert it into the bytecode that MicroPython uses, uh, you know, do a lot of work. Whereas with this frozen module, it's stored in flash memory as that bytecode. So it doesn't have to do any of that processing and it can import it very quickly because it's just reading the bytecode directly. It doesn't have to do that conversion phase. So that's handy. Okay, let's import the machine module <clears throat> and then let's just run the exact same commands that we ran before. So let's create an SD card uh, object. So SD card dot SD card, uh, point it at the same spy interface, uh, interface one, and then pin 15 is the chip select pin. So we create one of those objects. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our SD card object created. Now let's run the os.unmount command. And so that unmounted our file system. And then let's create our file system, vfs equals the os.vfs fat object, using SD card as the backing store, <clears throat> and then the root file system here. So I run that. And now let's see os.lister. Hey, we got all our files here. So everything that's on our SD card is available to us. And I can import test.py. 
uh, uh, oops, no, not test.py, import test. And that's gonna import the test.py file. And then I can run my test.add function that's inside of there. And cool, it works. And now let's see, let's import MicroPython. And let's run micropython.mem underscore info. And now we see, hey, check this out. <clears throat> Our heap usage is noticeably less, five kilobytes less. So we're only using about eight kilobytes, nine kilobytes almost of, of uh, heap memory. That's a pretty big savings. You know, when you only have 96 kilobytes total on this board and you notice like you only really have about 30 kilobytes because MicroPython has to take some of that memory. Um, I think some of that memory is used as like a buffer for when it reads and writes to flash. So, you know, you don't get the full 96K. Uh, but this is that's a noticeable savings here. Just by freezing that SD card.py module, we're able to save 5K. And so that just shows you because when you look at the source code for that module, it's not trivial. There's there's a lot of code in there, uh, and so that stuff adds up. So we go back to the SD card.py file. You know this thing. Um, let's see, 7.78 kilobytes. That's that's a large file uh, for for a little board like this. So uh, that's you know pretty much what I wanted to show here is that. By freezing that module, it makes it easier. You can import it directly. You don't have to copy that module over. You do have to make a custom build of MicroPython, but I just showed you it's very simple using that little Vagrant VM. You can just run a command, uh, you know, copy that file into the modules directory, and you're good to go. Uh, and you'll save memory. It'll be a little bit faster and easier. Uh, now, the one thing is, you know, this isn't automatic. So, like, I have to run these commands to mount my SD card as a file system here. Uh, and you might wonder, like, could I make this automatic? And yeah, you could. I, I won't show it in this video, but you know, in the previous videos, like how to load modules and run code, I talked about how there's a concept of a main.py file that you can put on your file system, and that's run whenever the board boots up. And so you could put these commands into your main.py file uh, that basically just say, okay, you know, create this SD card object, unmount the root file system and then mount a new root file system using that SD card. Um, and then, you know, maybe you could go in and import whatever module that was on your SD card and then run some function inside of there that runs code off your SD card or whatever. Uh, so there's nothing stopping you from putting this code into the standard places that MicroPython has for running code when the board starts up, like either that main.py or boot.py file. So uh, something, maybe an exercise for the reader to take a look at that and see, you know, if you want to make this a little bit more automatic and, and make it work, uh, you know, similar to the Pi board. But again, like I said, you know, Pi board, uh, really good option in that it's, you just plug in the card and it has some logic right now where it detects if that card's there and it mounts it automatically. Uh, but this is cool, you know, using the latest version of MicroPython, the 1.8.4 release, you can mount an SD card with the ESP port. And if you're using the Feather Huzzah and the Ada Logger wing like this, it's pretty straightforward hardware wise. Um, now, if you aren't using the Ada Logger wing, um, you know, you can still wire up an SD card. So there are, uh, I'm pretty sure we have an SD card breakout in the shop. Uh, let's see, micro SD breakout, uh, Adafruit. Uh, I, I would hope we have one. Yeah, there we go. So <clears throat> you can get one of these and this just wires up to your board uh, using a SPI protocol. So, you know, there's a data input, data output, a clock, ground, power, and then a chip select line right here. These are what you'd connect to your ESP8266, uh, ESP8266 module. <clears throat> and look at the uh, MicroPython hardware SPI devices guide that I did that talks a little bit more about how to connect a SPI peripheral to a board. But if you want the easy thing, you know, check out the Feather Zaw and the Ada Logger Wing. It just plugs in and you're ready to go for that. So, okay, so if folks have questions, throw them in the chat and we'll see if we can get to these right now. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I'll keep it in the main view right now. So, okay, uh, da, da, da. oh yeah, test.py. Some people were saying that, uh, yeah, in some previous videos, I was uh, showing how to load modules and I had two modules that were named test and uh, one of them I was loading, which I didn't expect to load and it caused all kinds of problems. So yeah, be careful, give things unique names, even if you think it's like a random test thing, because it might not be uh, for this, so. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, some folks are talking about the micro bit. Uh, yeah, and good question. So uh, I actually, have, I've got a micro bit right here. Um, so micro bit, of course, it's a board that runs MicroPython also. Now this one, um, it doesn't have an SD card holder on it. I'm, I'm not completely sure if this supports SD cards with MicroPython. I'm pretty sure it supports spy devices, but you probably have to use this card edge connector to break out some of the GPIO pins. So I'm not totally sure. And again, check your board's documentation. Uh, the Pi board and the YPi for sure support SD cards. Uh, Microbit, you probably want to look and see, uh, but I'm, I don't think it supports it right now, but uh, I, I might be wrong. So check that out and see 
uh, for that. Uh, let's see, someone was wondering. Uh, da, da, da. And yeah, I don't see any other questions here, so. Oh yeah, someone was wondering, uh, can you compile modules into a PyC on some boards rather than freezing? Yeah, so great question. Um, and this is something that's kind of changing or in flux a little bit or still a little bit new in MicroPython. But from what I understand, um, there is a concept of frozen bytecode that can be frozen into the firmware. So it's like compiled actually into like C code that's in the firmware. Um, and that's maybe the most efficient because it's stored in flash and it's actually executed from the flash memory. Uh, so it really uses as little heap memory as possible. But there is a tool, there's this mpy-cross tool, and it's in the uh, MicroPython GitHub repository. And so you can see this mpy-cross. And the way this thing works, you can compile this tool, you can run it against a .py file, and it will output a .mpy, an mpy file, which is basically the frozen bytecode for a Python module. Uh, and so with that file, on some of the ports, but not all of the ports, like the ESP8266 port doesn't support it right now, but on some of the ports, you can copy that .mpy file onto the file system and import it as if it was a .py file. Uh, so like you have test.py with raw Python source code, you could import that, or you run that mpy cross tool, and that will give you a test.mpy, and then you copy that to your board and import test and then that's gonna actually import the MPY file. It's a little more efficient because it's smaller. It's only storing the bytecode instead of storing the actual Python source code, um, but it still has to use RAM to load up that bytecode and store it. It's not gonna be able to execute that from uh, the file system, at least as far as I understand. So it's, it's better in that it's smaller, uh, but it's not as nice as freezing it into the module. And again, unfortunately, the ESP8266 port doesn't support loading those yet. There's like a config flag you have to turn on to support it, and it, so it does work if you turn that on, but I'm not gonna get into that yet. I think at some point in the near future, uh, I would bet that they probably enable that in a future release. So yeah, for now, it's kind of a weird story. The easiest thing, I think, honestly, is freezing the firmware into uh, a custom build because you just set up that little vagrant box uh, throw your scripts into the modules directory, build the firmware, flash it, and you're good. Like, you know, once you've got the firmware, uh, like the libraries you want to use in that firmware, you're probably not going to modify those libraries super often. You know, your user code that you're running is probably what you're going to change a lot. And so you can still keep that in your uh, file system and run out of that. So um, let's see, someone was wondering, let's see, uh, what's the battery life uh, for the, oh, what's the battery on the SD card shield? Yeah, good question. So there is a real-time clock on here, a little RTC uh, that just keeps accurate time. And so it's uh, it's not actually exposed right now to MicroPython, although that would be a good little driver for us to do at some point in the future. It uses I squared C uh, to communicate with it. And so this battery holder, this is a backup for the real-time clock so that basically you set the time and then it's got a nice little accurate crystal that'll keep the clock uh, running. And the battery just makes sure that even when you unplug the board, the clock is still keeping time. So it's perfect for like data logging stuff. Not supported just yet. We, I don't think we have a driver for this one yet, but uh, we will probably in the near future for that. Uh, so that's what. Uh, oh, someone's asking about the, the ESP32. Uh, so how long until we see MicroPython there? Uh, well, actually, I just saw uh, YPy, the PyCom, the company that makes YPy. They just had on their Twitter, and I think they just announced a bunch of stuff. They have a new board that's based on the ESP32. Uh, so I'm sure, who knows, um, you know, I'm sure it'll pop up uh, in, in stores everywhere pretty soon. But uh, check that out. That's probably going to be one of the early boards that use the ESP32 and MicroPython. Um, I don't know of others. I think there was like this Bubble Pi that maybe was using it, or maybe that's a different board. I can't remember. There's, there's a lot of new boards coming out in the MicroPython world. So uh, the ESP looks like a really cool board, and I think we'll, we'll hopefully see that uh, in the near future too with uh, support for this. Because I think the support right now for the old ESP8266 uh, old, it's not that old, but for the current board is so good that, you know, it would just make sense to add uh, good support for the ESP32. So, uh, and as soon as it's available, I'm sure I'll be doing some videos and stuff on that for that. So cool. Okay. I think that was it uh, question wise. So I'll wrap up the stream. This was how to use an SD card or a uh, little micro SD card with micro Python. And, you know, just as a summary, you can check out things like the Pi board that support it directly or the YPy that have a nice little add on peripheral and you can plug an SD card into here or you can use with the ESP8266. You can use like the Ada logger wing and plug that in. And with a little bit of MicroPython code, you can use that as your file system. So cool stuff uh, that, that's ready to go. And uh, let's see, let me jump back to the main kind of headshot here. 
So, okay, I'll wrap up the stream then. So check out youtube.com slash Adafruit. You can see this video and all kinds of other videos, uh, projects and things like pretty much almost every day during the week, we've got new stuff coming out. And then check out twitch.tv slash Adafruit. You can see me streaming these things live. I like to do a stream on Mondays and Fridays uh, usually, although I might start moving that Monday stream to Tuesdays because it's a little bit hard sometimes uh, to get things ready in time for this. Uh, and like I said too, look for Wednesday this week. I'll probably have a guide out that goes into the details of how to set up the SD card with the ESP8266 and some of the other boards. So if you couldn't follow along in the video here, uh, just keep an eye on the Adafruit blog and we'll have a new guide out for that pretty soon. Uh, so, okay, until the next time, I guess I will see folks later. Uh, and I think this week on Friday, we might have a new board potentially, some beta stuff to look at, uh, maybe drop some hints there. But uh, so I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens uh, at the end of this week, but definitely look for some fun MicroPython stuff. Uh, so until next time, it's Tony from Adafruit. Thanks for watching. See ya.